everybody, this is Pam. Welcome to Lit Camp. We're going to start our day at our opening campfire with our hello song, and then I'm going to teach you a new song. Hello, Chip. Hello, friends. Hello, campers. We're glad to see you here. You know, I always say that singing always makes me feel better, even if I do it just by myself or if I'm doing it even just in my own mind. And so we'll try that song again. And you can sing along or you can just listen. Hello, Chip. Hello, campers. Hello, readers. We're glad to see you here. Hello, campers. Hello, readers. Hello, writers. We're glad to see you here. That's a nice song to sing, too, for your family or somebody new who comes to your house or just when you go back to school. It's a good one to share with others. I'm going to share another one with you, and this comes from Lit Camp. Lit Camp is all around the world, which means children and young adults all around the world are actually doing Lit Camp. And that's pretty cool because they're also doing Lit Camp in lots of different languages. Not only that, but many, many different cultures. So people experience Lit Camp in their own way, and, and we're, we always learn. We learn so much from all the different Lit Campers, and we, we also gain a lot from all their great ideas. This song is called 2A, 2A, and it's one of a very special song at Lake Camp. It usually we use it to bring everyone together or if we want to set an intention for our writing that day. And it goes like this. 2A, 2A, Barima, 2A, 2A. 2A, 2A, Barima, 2A, 2A. Abu Grabba, Awa, Dawa, Dawa. 2A, 2A, Abu Grabba. Awa dawa dawa tuwe tuwe barima tuwe tuwe. That's a really beautiful song. Today we're going to listen to a read aloud by our visiting author today, Ross Barak, who has written an incredible book called The Very Impatient Caterpillar. The cool thing to know about Ross is that he's also the illustrator. And his bio on the back, which is always a great place to look, I'm always interested to see author bios. It, it says, Ross Barak loves drawing pictures, he loves making up jokes, and he loves dabbling in animation and hanging out with his family. It's just interesting to learn, and also because he, you can see that, I, I could see why he would like animation, right? Animation is like cartoons, and you can see where he'd probably be really good at that. Today he's going to talk about the strength of confidence, and you're going to see through the pages of this very funny and kind of silly book, uh, what happens to this particular character as he becomes stronger in that aspect of his own life in confidence. So let's listen. I'm Ross Burak, author and illustrator of The Very Impatient Caterpillar. I am so excited to have this opportunity to read my book with you, but before I get to the book, I was asked to talk to you about how the caterpillar in my story exemplifies confidence well. Caterpillar is so thrilled when he learns that he can become a butterfly, but Caterpillar is not too confident when he learns he has to stay patient for a whole two weeks. Um, after a few failed attempts, Caterpillar finally finds the confidence in himself to stay patient. For the entire metamorphosis. And then, well, I don't want to ruin the ending, so let's get to reading. The Very Impatient Caterpillar. Everyone say with me, say, is it time yet? All right. You see caterpillars sitting here on a rock, looking at all these other caterpillars crawling up a tree. And he's thinking to himself, what's going on? So he says, hey, what are you guys doing? We're going to metamorphosize. Meadow, what now? Transform into butterflies. Right, right, I knew that. Wait, you're telling me I can become a butterfly? Yes, with wings. Yes, for real? Yes, wait for me. Now what? Build your chrysalis. Chrysalis, right, right. I knew that. What? How did you do that? Is it a spin or more of a twirl? 
Let's see how he does making this chrysalis. Am I a butterfly yet? Ugh. Now what? Just be patient and let nature take its course. Patience, right, right. I got this. You guys think he's got patience? No, me neither. But let's find out what happens. Am I a butterfly yet? No. How about now? No. Now? No. Be patient. I have a question. Not yet. You don't even know what I was going to ask. Fine. Ask. How's your day going? Also, am I a butterfly yet? No. Just be patient. Now everyone say, shh, we're trying to metamorphosize. Okay, okay. Obviously I know this, but do you know how long this takes? Two weeks. Right, right, two weeks. Two weeks! Oh, what am I going to do in here for two weeks? Can I get a comic book or something? <gasps> what if I need the bathroom? Anyone want to play a game? No? What if I want a snack? Hello? Two pizzas, please. My address, a chrysalis. Click. Hello? Hello? How long have I been in here? Boing, boing, boing. It's still day one? This is taking forever. That's it. I feel metamorphosized enough. Look out, world. Feast your eyes on this beautiful... Butterfly! How do I look? Transformed? Time to spread my wings and fly. I think it's a good idea for this caterpillar, this caterpillar, to try and fly. No? What do you think is missing? Yes! Wings! On the count of three, everyone say wait. One, two, three. Wait! Uh-oh, where are my wings? Now give me a big splat. Splat. Time for a new approach. All right. Let's see what Caterpillar has done. Oh, okay, you can do this. You can be patient. Oh, who am I kidding? I can't be patient. You are the little Caterpillar that could. I am the little Caterpillar that couldn't. Get a grip, you can. I can't, I can't. You can, I can't. You can, I can't, you can, I can't, you can, I can't. And the squirrel is like, what is going on inside this chrysalis? Now. Everyone with me, say, say with me, say, I can be patient. Say, patience is all in the mind. Be one with the chrysalis. Take a deep breath in. Hold it, hold it, hold it, and out. Look, day six. I'm doing it. Say, just be patient, just be patient, just be patient, just be patient. And then, two weeks later, he's crawled out of his chrysalis. I did it! I'm a butterfly! Woohoo! You know, I do feel transformed. And starting now, I'm going to be way more patient. That's great! Hey, where are y'all going? We're migrating! Migrating, right, right, wait for me! Are we there yet? Ugh. All right. Thank you guys so much for listening to my book, The Very Impatient Caterpillar, and have a great day. I love how Ross talks about the very impatient caterpillar around this idea of confidence. In your own life, think about a time when you were practicing something or you had to be patient and wait for something, but you knew you were also growing at the same time. A lot of life is like that. We're always practicing things. I think sometimes we're practicing maybe physical things like getting better at kicking a soccer ball or maybe reading itself. But I also think confidence is about the emotional things. So getting a little bit braver about things or just getting more confident uh, to speak up in class or to try something new at home um, or to maybe if you're the younger brother or sister to maybe uh, say something to your big brother or sister that feels like a learning or a teaching kind of a thing. So confidence comes in many different ways. And today when we look at this book, I I think this book is an amazing, amazing story about confidence, about just the character becoming more and more full of who he really is. And that's a big part of that strength of confidence. 
So today in the Bring the Text to Life work that we do, I'm actually going to act out a little bit of this book, and I hope you'll be able to do it too. So really, the main thing is to watch me doing the acting and then when you go back into your own family or even just in your own bedroom, um, you can try this too. It's pretty fun. And because Ross is a great writer, it makes it really easy to do. So I'm going to stand up. And this is also something you can do when you're reading books is you can actually, again, you could just do this in your mind, but you can also really move your body around to get that text going in you. And so the character and also rereading, we heard Ross read that text, but now I'm going to read it and I might even reread it too. But today I'm going to try this out to think about that strength of confidence and how I bring the text to life and put myself um, into that into that into that scene that this character's in. Hey, what are you guys doing? We're going to metamorphosize. What meta what now? Transform into butterflies. Right, right, right. I knew that. Wait, you're telling me I can become a butterfly with wings? Yes, for real. Yes. Yes, wait for me! So now I'm just kind of going to pretend I'm him. He's hanging upside down, Chip, so I can't really do that. But he's like this. You might remember when Ross was reading the story. And he says, now what? Build your own chrysalis, says the other character, just like Ross said earlier. What? Says the character. How did you do that? Is it a spin or more of a twirl? And what I like about this is he's really trying. He's really not perfect, but he's really trying. So is it a spin or is it more of a twirl? Which one is it? And I think that's a lot about confidence is this idea of trying something, not always being perfect. And then he asks the question, am I a butterfly yet? And I think the thing about confidence is that you really are practicing different things. It's a spin and it's a twirl and all of those things get me thinking and feeling about myself and my own confident life. Sometimes I have to almost almost walk differently to learn how to be a little more confident. And I think that's what this character is doing. He's trying out different ways of being to make himself feel stronger. And in the end of that story, as Ross showed us, he actually is stronger. He's very confident. And then he has to go off into the next part of his life in a migration, which means he's going to travel somewhere else. And you know what? He's a lot more confident to be able to do that. Hey, guys. I was just reading a little bit to Chip. He is quietly taking it all in. And thank you also for holding my glasses today. I want to talk a little bit, when we think about ourselves as being powerful readers, when we have this experience around a reading power time, what I want to think about today when I think about Ross's book is I am really very impressed with how he uses exclamation marks, periods, and all kinds of things that he does with punctuation. So if you look at actually this page, and you see he's using big words, he's using big letters, big words, he's using question marks and exclamation points sometimes together. Um, and when I'm reading, I'm, I'm often thinking about how writers use punctuation. When I'm, as a reader, I'm very conscious of that because I think it's actually really hard to use punctuation well. So when you think about a question mark that's asking a question or an exclamation mark that's making you excited when you read it, the author is doing those things very deliberately. And I think that's pretty cool. So he does even use these little dots here that indicate that there's going to be more to come. And that's pretty cool, too. So a lot of great things are happening in this book around punctuation. When you read today in your own books during bunk time, during your explore on your own time, I want you to be thinking about when you notice punctuation in Ross's book, he uses it to lift the level of our energy as readers and also to really convey the inside thinking of a character. You can do that when you're reading today. I want you to be thinking about that. What does the punctuation do for the books you read? When I think about myself as a writer, I think about how reading is like breathing in and writing is like breathing out. And it takes a lot of confidence to actually write things down. It takes a lot of confidence, meaning, again, that we're always practicing. And writing is a lot about practice. Every day I sit down at my computer or my writing pad, sometimes I write on paper, sometimes I write on a screen, and I'm always practicing my confidence. Even though I've written a lot of books myself, 
I'm still practicing every time I sit down to try to write something, but it's always worth it because my confidence builds even just by writing. I get stronger and I actually, every word I write and every minute I write makes me a more confident writer, even if it's not perfect. So today, the way I'm going to think about writing, and I hope you're going to do the same, is I'm, I'm very interested in this part of the book that Ross wrote, and I'm going to use it as a way to inform my writing. So he said, this on this page, or on this spread is what we call it, it's where he's really trying to convince himself that he's good enough and strong enough to do this thing, to make this metamorphosis, the change in him from the caterpillar to the butterfly happen. So he says, okay, you can do this. You can be patient. Oh, who am I kidding? Get a grip, you can. And then he says, I can't, I can't. And then he says, you are the little caterpillar that could. And then he says, I am the little caterpillar that couldn't. You can, you can't, you can, I can't. That's exactly what growing confidence feels like. It feels like you're kind of back and forth between I can, I can't, I can, I can't. That is so normal. And please don't worry when you feel that way. I feel that way when I'm sitting down to write, especially when there's nothing on the screen or the page. Every day I try to write on lots of different things. So sometimes I write on a notepad, sometimes on a screen. Today I'm going to try to write on my phone because that's, it's so portable and I can take it with me. So if, if I have, if you have a phone to write on or your parents' phone and you could little, try a little bit of writing today on there, that's great. If you don't have a phone, don't worry about it at all. You can write on any scrap of paper. And if you don't have paper, you can just think in your mind and save your stories there because your stories really are important. Today, I'm going to write a little bit about confidence. I'm going to write about a time in my life when I was learning how to be confident. This was a time, and I'm just going to write about it right now, Chip. This was a time when I was learning how to ride a bike. And my dad was teaching me, and I was scared. And I'm going to write that too. I'm going to write about my feelings at the time because I liked, I was pretty impressed with Ross, how he talked about his feelings. And actually, I'm going to try using a, a little bit of an exclamation point there just because I like that Ross did that too. And I'm going to remember how that day that my father let go of the seat, I was riding and riding and I was really not sure I could do it. And then all of a sudden I felt lighter and I'm going to write that. And I realized that my dad had let go of the seat. And he was a really, he was a really good dad. He died five years ago, but I always think of him and I think of him every day. And sometimes we have people in our life, lives who are not with us anymore, but we can show so much gratitude to them for the fact that they teach us how to be confident in things. So I don't ride many bikes anymore, but still the feeling of him letting go of the seat is what I'm going to write about because he did that for me in a lot of different ways. And I, I really appreciate that. I'm also going to do um, a little bit of a question mark because I like that Ross did that. So I'm going to say, am I still missing my dad? Question mark. I think you know the answer to that. Today, I want you to try in your writing to think about a time you have felt confident or a time in your past when you were little that you felt a sense of confidence. And was there somebody who helped you do that? And then also, I would love for you to try a little bit of Ross's appreciation of punctuation. Let's try. Hey, Chip. We're going to talk a little bit about bunk time today, about what happens when we explore reading on our own. So at home, today or tomorrow or the next day, definitely make time for this for reading on your own or reading next to a, a sib your sibling or, or someone else in your family. But just to take that time is actually gonna build your confidence as a reader. You might not feel like the best reader or you might feel like a great reader. Either way, it doesn't matter. Having the time every day, even just 20 minutes a day is actually gonna make you a super reader. Confidence is something that you build. It's not something that you just have automatically. And there are lots of things in my life that I've had to really practice at in order to get better at. 
And I think that's very true of reading, is that you really just have to say, every day I'm gonna make that time, and make sure that when you do, you build a confidence circle around you. So think about what doesn't make you feel confident, or is there something that's gonna lower your sense of having faith in yourself? I think that the thing I love about the very impatient caterpillar and the way Ross wrote it is that there's a real strong sense of this caterpillar feeling like other people around him are really encouraging him. So find somebody who does encourage you and talk to them about it. And if you feel a little bit shy about that, then make that voice in your head a voice of confidence. Say, you know what, I can do this. Just like little caterpillar in this book, he kept talking to himself. He kept saying, you can do it. And even when the voice said, no, you can't, he kept saying, yeah, yeah, I can. And I think that's a big part of what it means to develop confidence. So today, when you go off to your independent reading, I want you to be thinking about what books bring you confidence, or is it just something fun and silly that you like to read? Remember that Ross loves animation, he likes comics, he likes jokes. Obviously, he must read a lot of that stuff too. So it doesn't have to be a long, fancy book in order to be a reader and in order to be a confident reader. Today, when you go back to your reading, find something that makes you confident. Does it just make you feel like you can read really fast to read books that have a lot of pictures? Then do that. If you feel like you like to read books that are funny, then do that. If you'd like rather read a book with a friend or a family member, then do that. The main thing about bunk time, about exploring reading on your own, is that you should feel like you're building a sense of confidence. As we come to a close, I want you to be thinking about this strength of confidence and how you can take it with you back into your life to give to someone else. The great thing about the camp is that we're always thinking about affirmation and affirmation is when we're really celebrating each other. Well, we do that through shooting stars. So I'm gonna give you some today. You can catch them and I'm gonna to pretend to catch some from you. And we can do that by celebrating the strengths of others. Building confidence means we also compliment ourselves. We give ourselves a confidence compliment. So today I'd like for you to think about what's a confidence compliment you could give yourself. Today, Chip, I would say my confidence compliment is that I wrote something that felt personal and I wanna give myself a confidence compliment for that because that helps me to learn to be a better writer, right? Um, I think for you, you can think about something in your life that gives you a feeling of, hey, I, I can do this. It might not be perfect yet, but I can do it. And, and then today, what I would love for you to do is take that confidence back and give it to someone else. So think today about someone in your family or someone in school that you're not seeing right now maybe, but you're soon to see, somebody that you can even mentally send a confidence compliment to. Even better, if you have access to the internet, you could send an email or a text message on a phone or on a video call to share with someone what you feel. Wow, I noticed that you're getting better at that. Or, you know, saying to your mom or your grandmother or your grandpa or your dad or somebody in your life, hey, I want to give you a confidence compliment. It could be something really small, like I just love how you say hello to me in the morning. Or it could be something where you notice that I noticed that you've been You've been practicing how to cook. That's really good. I admire you for that. So today, let's go back into the world and give a confidence compliment to someone else. And as we come to a close today and we sing the farewell song, I want you to be thinking about what you feel confident about or what you're practicing getting more confident in. And I just want to say how I appreciate you. I appreciate what you're doing to work hard and to be a reader and to be a writer and a storyteller and all of those things that you do, I wanna give you a confidence compliment. I wanna say I appreciate you and I see that you work hard and I feel for that. So with that, let's come to a close. So let's come to a close with our farewell song and remember again that Young people, lit campers all over the world are singing this song. That actually gives me a lot of confidence too. It makes me know that when we have an idea together, we can make it huge. We can create a movement around an idea, an idea of lit camp, which is about joy, and it's about affirmation, and it's about knowing that we all are readers, writers, storytellers, and world changers too, Chip, and that's for sure, just by being together. The song goes like this. So long, farewell, goodbye, my friends. 
So long, farewell, goodbye. We'll see you soon again, my friends. So, so long, farewell, goodbye. See you next time. So long, farewell, goodbye, my friends. So long, farewell, goodbye. We'll see you soon again, my friends. So, so long, farewell.